what people don't realize about government or parliament that was created out of the birth of treason we would not have a government and we would not have a parliament if treason hadn't occurred all right so we made it guys <laughs> thank you so much for being here do you want to uh, introduce yourself so yeah i'm chris reed i'm jim i'm aaron indigo and i'm agnes so um yeah it's been a long time coming we've been talking about this for over a year sitting down and having this conversation um we're all in our kind of like late 20s and we was like we really need to represent this conversation for our generation and to make it bite-sized for our people because it's, it's, it's complicated what we're going to talk about today which is um the magna carta article 61 what's going on right now treason um the great awakening everything that's kind of happening in the uk and across the globe we're going through such a big transformation that um we've felt during everything that we've gone through the most important thing is to apply knowledge instead of just kind of just going out there and screaming and and, and being uneducated and we've realized the power we've already seen the power of when people have used this knowledge and so yeah man i've invited you here to my house southwest london it's the, it's the day after lion's gate it's the 9th of august 2021 the lions are here <laughs> the lions are here man yeah and we just um yeah man let's start that conversation so um so how, how do we want to start then so i think the most important thing to kind of get people to realize is that although we may have a picture of how things are it's all really just been a case of usurpation and just treason inspired bs to uh to excuse my french but um yeah people need to see that i hear a lot of people talking about common law and stuff and people need to understand understand and understand that we've never had common law so we've never really had true common law as it was meant to happen and that's purely because it comes go so common law is kind of 13th century so that's when it kind of came in and started being formed into case law and, and this type of stuff but that was a hundred years after the Magna Carta was created and the Magna Carta was created to take the power away from the King's courts, to take the power away from the papacy, foreign intervention and foreign rule. So in the core principle of the Magna Carta being created, it was to remove that power from those courts, from the King courts, from the papal papacy. And then the creation of common law has kind of given it back to the, the King's courts and the papacy, which obviously we, we can't have because nobody is higher than the law. Everybody should be under the same rule of law. And we should, with things like to the Magna Carta, so the Magna Carta really, in their eyes, only lasted kind of two or three months. So we had the the need for the creation of it, re, the papacy sealing this papal bull, which was a Treaty of Verona 1213, which was all of our rights, all of our souls, all of our land, everything we own given over to the Vatican. And when the barons started finding out, finding out about this and telling all of the people, the people communally got together and decided that no we're not having that like we are we're, we're english we're sovereign we're we're sovereign kings and queens and that that's how it is we're not we're not listening to any foreign rule so they got together they went down to runnymede and they essentially got a peace treaty that had not only true sovereignty for the people within it but also created yeah it was, it was, sorry or took the power away from the, the king the king and the queen as they wanted because what happened was previously people were going up to the king's courts and the king was being judge, jury and executioner, which isn't law and isn't fair and doesn't provide a rule of law whatsoever. So yeah, to, to stop that, the Magna Carta is created. And then what happens is a few months later, King John dies of dysentery. So he's out of the picture. His nine-year-old son, King Henry, takes over. And this nine-year-old is now changing treaties with the Pope whispering in his ear all of the things that the, the very same Magna Carta 1215 prevents and, and prohibits from doing. So now we've got a nine-year-old king changing treaties with the Pope. Well, actually, officially, it was the Pope that annulled it. So like, all you need to do, and all people need to really do with this, is read the original Magna Carta 1215 once, the translated version, and you'll see everything that they've done, they haven't been allowed to do. Yeah. So although, and this is what people need to kind of see these days, is although that, like, yes, the courts they have buildings the police the, their enforcement these things look and feel and smell real but the reality is that it's all here through treason and it's all illegitimate and i like to think that once people realize this system of slavery that we're all in once people actually really see that we're all in this together we'll all want to leave it together and the whole we won't be using notices anymore because we won't be having to individually fight this beast anymore because that's how this beast has its success we're all individually 
spread out and when this system attacks us it attacks us as their whole they're fully resource beast and it comes as a, as an individual and it gets a lot of success that's um so there's a there's a lot there you know there's 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 runny mead there's the 13th century there's beasts um so let's take it back and just make it a little bit more digestible you know um i want someone like my mother to be able to understand this because we've been denied this information let's go back to rome so let's go back most, to rome most people, most people know and they, they know the roman empire as being this powerful machine with loads of buildings loads of coliseums like that's where the power is kind of being if you think of movies like gladiator and stuff that's like people will but and if you look at the, the stories of like the bible and other religious texts and stuff people are familiar with rome and what happened with rome rome never fell rome just morphed into the papacy and, and when what's i said papacy so the papacy is the popes so okay. you, you you talk about the the vatican the uh, things to connect to the, Va the vatican and the bloodlines and the, pap the papal bloodline so the pope said that is what we refer to when we say the papacy so everything vatican so what happened when Rome fell was the papacy, so the Vatican, was going around to other countries and they were essentially going to the, the monarchies or the kings and queens and they were saying that we're going we're gonna to give you the Catholic Church, you're going to accept a load of money and jewels and you're going to be under us via this treaty that we're going to get you to sign. And that's how things are going to go. You're going to receive a lot of money, you're going to have everything that you've ever wanted, like you've always wanted, but yeah, we really, we, we call the shots here. Mm -hmm. And if a king or queen rejected that it would be the vatican attacking them until until they submitted and if they accepted it would be yeah life life under the, the, the catholic church but through throughout throughout this the people still suffered made majorly because the, the, before they before, before the papacy had got involved they still had these tyrannical monarchs who were raping pillaging and just overtaxing their people to fund their foreign wars and when the the papacy came in and, and took charge of it things only got worse and tenfold so we're then dealing with a whole country of people that are hungry haven't eaten uh, being whisked off the courts and being executed and hung for things that they're not guilty of and it's just a whole shit show so excuse, excuse the french but when the barons started finding out about this treaty of Verona, which is the the papacy's agreement with the monarch of England, so King, well, actually, what I'll explain about is so what what really happened with King John. So King John fell out with Rome, and as a result, what they did was they put a guy called Stephen Langton as the um, kind of the heads. He, he wasn't classed as the king. I think he was classed as like the archbishop, but in the in Rome's eyes, he was the he was the man, and King John recognised this. So. Even though King John was still king, this guy Stephen Langton was going around and running the show for the Vatican. And what King John did was he went back groveling to Rome and said, Look, I, "I apologize, I, I messed up. Tell me what I need to do to um, to get the power back and f for me to be recognised as uh, the the authority again." And that's when they made him sign the Treaty of Rome, twelve thirteen. So now he's signed this treaty with all of our rights, all of our land and stuff, all over back to Pope um, Innocent III. And he now owns us and now the barons have in between this time started finding out they've heard rumors that this is what king john has done they start to see the legitimacy just explain it. quickly who the barons are like so for the, people who the barons so the barons they are the tr true kind of authority of the of the commonwealth and of the kingdom so back in the times that we're talking about if we're talking about a community that's living together if somebody was going into the village and killing the chickens and you know who it was you'd report it to your baron the baron would solve things and it would be in the baron's best interest to solve things because if he didn't you'd all come together and you'd replace him in the nicest words possible so the barons they it was it was in it was in their their best interest to keep things peaceful to to to, li to literally keep the peace because if, if they didn't it, it it turned on them and do, do we have barons now? Yeah, we still. So nothing, nothing has changed in terms of their their roles or their power. It's just been illegitimately and treasonously watered down. So just like with um, I'll, I'll continue talking about Rome and, and the papacy first. So try not to get lost. But um, yeah. So with um, the the papacy making us sign or making King John sign the, the Treaty of Verona twelve thirteen. That's all of our rights gone off to them. The barons then come together start telling people of what's happened people start rising together and that's when we all go down to runny meat together and this is what people need to realize that it wasn't just a barons thing like if if 25 barons go down to 
Runnymede and take on the King plus the Vatican, they'd, they'd have been chopped up and a, and a piece would have been sent to every country that was potentially planning on invading England, England as a deterrent. Uh, you don't get a peace treaty from those organizations and, and if places like the Vatican unless there's true communal support and force and power behind it like there, there, w like there would have been. So we've then got everybody communally agreeing that things are messed up and things need change and everybody going down and getting this peace treaty. People thinking that, okay, we've got this now, things are going to be good. And then obviously a few months later when King John dies, King Henry takes over and that's, that's when things really started illegitimately and treasonously going wrong because Magna Carta 1215 that was that was that was the baby that, that was that was that was the one that was our people's trust that had security clauses for anti-treason and for tyranny and for all the things that have opened the gates to things happening to us now like this document this treaty this peace treaty had those protections in place it still does that's why it's so that's why it's so important there's, there's a lot of people that say um it, it, it doesn't have it, that power anymore. What, what do you say to that? Because, you know, we've been going around educating people and, and trying to, you know, get them to sign their oath to one of the barons. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of people that say, like, you know, it's dead and it doesn't, it doesn't exist and there's no power. Like, what would you have to say to that? Just, again, that's, that's why I get, just get everybody to just read the original translated version because just like by reading that, it will show you that it's not just for the barons because it's got words. Like I've said, I've, I've done a video where it explains that, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're talking about a treaty that in those times t things were a little bit sexist. So that's why in the actual Clause 61 translation, it refers to like free men and free men and people like that. And although it says words like the commune as well, which is, there's it's not gender specific for that. So it's got words like that, but again the document is <coughs> excuse me from a from a time where things where, where men unfortunately had a lot more power than women so that's why it's referred to in that but yeah just like by reading the document you'll see that it's not just for the barons you'll see words like in perpetuity or perpetual which means to last forever and especially things like clause 61 towards like the bottom or not maybe not clause 61 maybe like clause 63 and other clauses like that it will say near the bottom and any change or any any part of this treaty that gets altered like consider it void and invalid forever like it, it's literally a crime to change this document it's treason to change this document wow. so let's just put a uh, slow down a bit so um why do we need this why is it relevant right now there's a lot of people that think life is okay and like we're just like things are about to be normal like the, like why do we need this right now do you understand though? Like, yeah, there's a lot of people well, that well, are thinking. What's, what's the um the necess necessity of um Article sixty one? Like that specific clause. Why we're we using that clause right now? So when so obviously the invocation of the or the recent invocation of this goes back to twenty third of March two thousand and one. But the events leading up to that, like if we're talking about the position that we're in now, like it's not just from the past like twenty or thirty years or forty or fifty. Like this is millennium long treason that has just really been accelerated by. The mechanisms that was put in place starting in like the 70s and if we're talking about like the invocation of clause 61 that was really an open declaration to all of us that a lot of people have grown like especially me myself where the, the island that i grew up in we grew up in like the law is the law there is no alternative and, and black and white is how it is that's that's there's no there's nothing out of that like if you don't like the decision that's made from that authority and you best get a picket and you best go out protesting and hope somebody listens to you there's no there's nothing that you can do outside of the system because the system is benevolent all-knowing all-loving all-caring all-powerful and indestructible so when that declaration was made that look you, you guys have got clean treason has been declared you guys have got a clean slate a slate now to all of the bad things all like if we're talking about current times look at the legislation that they're putting through like it's it's scary just reading a couple of lines of that that's why it's it's important today. But going back to them, like that was the declaration of saying, look, everything's everything is a mess. We've done the best that we we we, we can do by giving you a, a tool that comes from yeah, it's a dusty document, dusty document that's been used previous times before with ultimate success that has resulted in the changeovers of, of monarchies. But we're we're giving you this tool to get with the people, get with the commune, and to change things if if you want to, if you really want to. All right, guys, so let's take it back a bit because I'm feeling a little confused and overwhelmed. Like, I think everyone is right now in this moment. There's so much information. You know, it's like an information war out there. Um, maybe I can just take it back in, on our journey. So, you know, we saw 2020 come in March. The whole world kind of dramatically changed. And um, we saw kind of draconian measures being applied from all governments across the world. Now, whatever your views on it are, they've been very strict. They've been kind of unprecedented. 
and it led to us you know learning a lot about kind of even before the magna Carta, i was aware about the straw man the idea that when you're born right your 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 name is written in capital letters often in blue or black ink and it's it's the way that the system work with us as a corporation or a business so i'm like mr aaron miller and they they speak to me through contracts like when the police speaks to you we're uneducated and when they say do you understand it means if i say yes i'm actually saying i stand under you and i started to realize that there's a you know they're making money on our birth certificate and stuff like this and um i really i want people to educate yourself on that um, the nature of the cage straw man on youtube is like a great that's where me and chris kind of started bonding on that kind of stuff when we first became friends um so maybe we could talk about now what we've been doing you know educating people on uh, the Magna Carta and, 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 and the oaths that we've been talking about and the 25 barons. So we were talking about earlier, you know, going back about, what, 800 years, there were 25 barons that were always there to protect, I guess, us as the, the people of the land. Trusted by the people to protect the people. And um, like uh, as we were kind of explaining before, it was in the best interest of the barons to keep peace because if they didn't, we'd we'd know what peace does did look like and we'd take it into our own hands just as the law should always tell us to like we should always be living in an honor-based society where we've got prov provisions in place and protections in place for treason tyranny all of the things that are happening to us now because if we're all communally aware that we've got those provisions in place it doesn't take 20 plus years after an invocation of a clause for us to start thinking and talking about stopping all of this if everybody's aware and everybody's educated then as soon as uh, something gets invocated then we can start everybody knows what to do and we can start actually changing it could, could one of you guys give me an example of why you feel it's necessary to have this um, education right now? Because a lot of people in our generation, they have no reason to, to even want to educate themselves on this or even care or think it's necessary. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's one of them scenarios and situations where I feel like until people are like in a, a predicament where they have to apply it, they don't. And because there's such a blanket over what's happening, people don't people aren't even aware of what's happening. So there's no need for them to be looking at the Magna Carta and activating it. But for someone who is going down that journey and came in like me and Aaron and we're looking at common law and now it's kind of led us to the depth of where even common law came from. Um, the baseline of it all, Magna Carta, and then learning about the specific Article 61 um, and then reading about like Magna says, how it was used back in the day to protect the people. <clears throat> so obviously now, um, when there's so much going on in the world um, and there is a regime, whatever your views are, there is a regime out here to control us and bring harm to us. And that's why for the people who have done the research, they're like, I'm going to go to Article 61 because that's the treason clause and that's what's always there to activate and uh, protect us. So I just feel like it's um it's the time now to draw upon that. What would you say, Jim? Like, what would you, what would you say we need it for right now? Yeah. So like you say, um, it's the treason clause. Um, and just a quick definition of treason is acts by people in power or whoever to um betray, betray their their own country, their own people. <clears throat> and if we just look at what's happening right now and some of the legislation that's being passed like the Coronavirus Act. Um, there's another one called the Coronavirus Bill, I believe it's 122. That is in its final stages about being passed pass, pass through right now. And it's given, or it's given the illusion of the powers to people in certain positions to forcibly detain people for any prolonged period of time that they see necessary. Now that's subjective <clears throat> and it goes off the person's own moral compass. And the way that everything's being pushed at the moment in the media, people's moral compass is all automatically like switched on people to, to think that we're doing harm by not getting experimental things pushed into our veins and we're, we're doing harm by not wearing masks when we're out in public, even though the science doesn't support either of those two things. Well, this is, this is what I really wanted to get into because you just said it there. Our government are starting to get into a position where they have power to kind of detain you to detain children and yeah. it goes back to what we were talking about the birth certificate because they own one tenth of us yeah. so this is a lot about we're not just we don't realize the power that we've given away and that our government have given away the, the government people people don't know people look at the government as this benevolent source of power and this source of unquestionable power and what people don't realize about government or parliament 
that was created out of the birth of treason. We would not have a government and we would not have a parliament if treason hadn't occurred. Like when, How did that occur and when did it occur? Do you know? So if if we go if we go back again to the period of time before Magna Carta 1215 came about and we're talking about a country that is in the midst of people for so the papacy are trying to take control of this country. They're trying to convert the monarch to, to do as they say. So all the while this is going on, the people of this, this country and kingdom are suffering. They're getting starved. They're getting thrown into the king's courts where King John has been judge, jury and executioner for, for literally anybody at any time of day. And the country and the kingdom is an absolute mess. So with the Treaty of Verona, that, so the Treaty of Verona is a, is a papal bull. And uh, I really advise, well, you probably have to go and duck, duck, go for this, but research what papal bulls are. So P-A-P-A-L-B-U-L-L-S. And uh, you'll see that papal bulls are actually the treaties that the Vatican uses to sign seal with uh, monarchies of different countries. But when treaties like the Treaty of Verona, for instance, that includes all of our land, all of our souls, all of our life, all of the life on this land. And when these evil entities make these agreements that include life, they have to take life to seal it. So papal bulls are actually sacrifices made that just kind of cement their evil manifestation so and when you say sacrifice what what specifically do you mean uh, the sacrifice of children so ch the sac sacrificial element of children because they are pure and innocent and closest to that god source yeah in human form right yeah and that's what makes these papal bulls and treaties have the significance that these evil entities hold that they have so just so the this treaties of verona was what the um the popes they were trying to like to take over the world i guess or trying to like you know they're trying to get every single country on the con uh, on the yeah to um to agree to this term so this yeah. is the treaties of verona so, so the treaty of verona that was just for that was just for us but um the what you're right they the, so the, what the papacy is doing so the papacy is, is rome and the popes and what they were doing for over time is they were going to every country that had a kind of significant monarchy or or or, pa or power structure mm -hmm. and they were going okay we want that we want to usurp that we want to put the catholic church down as down as that so for us they had the treaty of verona for say for instance the spanish uh Inqu inquisitions and stuff they had a different papal bull for that and it was just a pa any time that they wanted to do some evil manifestation they'd create a papal bull that told them that they were allowed to do so just kind that of, kind of similar to what they're doing now with the act statutes and legislations is they're just making their own rules kind of thing yeah and that and that is to do with if, if like clause 61 and the magna Carta the plays a significant role in that so what has happened over time is they've tried to obviously like, like i said parliament and government wouldn't have been created if treason hadn't occurred and then over time what has happened is they've tried to water down and eradicate the the roles more and more and more and more and more and then essentially what's happened is we've got to the stage where we've got like the treaties of nice the treaties of lisbon and stuff which have really kind of solidified handing over the rights and powers of, of us but openly as well like we've got to think the treaties of verona 1213 that was all we we weren't aware of that that was a secret agreement between the monarchy and the popes whereas these ones have been through botched referendums in front of our faces and it's made us almost think that we're we're doing that when we're not like our rights and our laws have been handed over to the EU and places like the UN. And then what's happened is re-Brexit, they've put up a show of saying, oh yeah, we're, we're splitting away from that. But your question was how are the parliament creating laws like confetti, this, that, and the other. Brexit has allowed them to do that because then with them exiting that, they've now parading themselves off as a, them being sovereign. And a parliament or government can never been to be sovereign. We are, we are sovereign. They're a dead corporate corporation mm. and an entity that is now parading and charading around as being sovereign and as a result of it parading and everybody thinking they're sovereign because that's let's not forget that like, everything that they do requires our consent so if we've got a community and everybody on the outside that thinks that this power center is legitimate then this power center that people think is legitimate that is also parading charading as being sovereign is then almost encouraged to put out this legislation and that because it's created an illusion that everybody else is believing in so it really is just trickery high level trickery 
a lot of trickery um and it's, it's, it seems just like what you're saying is that the, the governments and the people that are in power and that are supposed to be our sovereign and parents in a sense and look after us as a nation are, are very untrustworthy and they don't know their, their true role Absolutely. um but let me just take it back quickly so um we you were talking about the the treaties of verona and these popes came into um our country and they tried to control uh king john yeah yeah um and uh just because there were some big things mentioned there we were talking about like child sacrifice you know so um you're saying that with that, they also, in order to like seal that treaties, there would have also been some kind of child sacrifice. Yeah. Okay. If, if, so that's quite big, obviously, quite big news for people already, you know, because these are the popes and the Catholics at that time that came over. Um, and so then the Magna Carta um, was, was introduced to stop this from happening and to make sure that the people of the UK were just like protected. Yeah. So, so imagine, so people are starting in the, in the Commonwealth now, or just over in the kingdom to, to, to say correctly. So they're starting, the barons are going around and they've realised that King John has signed this Treaty of Verona with um, Pope Innocent III. Mm -hmm. And then what are they doing? They're going around telling the people, oh, do you know what the king's done to us? He's committed treason. Do you know what the king's done to us? He's committed treason. And they go around and they tell people and they tell people. And then people go down towards King King John. Everybody goes there together and they say, look, peace, peace treaty time. It is time for a peace treaty. You can't do that anymore. You have signed an agreement without our consent, signed, a, signed this treaty that have taken all of our rights, all of our land, everything. You've raped us essentially. So what we're doing is we're making you. We're well, not making. We're, again, you can't be forced to sign a peace treaty. It's peace. So we're giving you a peace treaty. We're not executing you like like we should have done. But here's the peace treaty. Yep. Seal it. Agree to it. And this is how this is how we're doing because we, you're you've got to your position from having the control in your courts from having the the power being. You, or you being above the law and yeah. we need to change that we need to, to flip that nobody is above the law anymore we are going to be going by a collective a collectively agreed and consented to set of rules and laws or clauses and articles and we're going to have these provisions in place for if things are if things become treasonous or tyrannical so that was the original creation <clears throat> of the magna carta in 1215 and any old google search will reveal to you that the Magna Carta was changed and Article 61 got taken out of it. Now, <clears throat> as we know, that's a treasonous act in itself. But can you go more into that on how that's treasonous and how that actually came about? Yeah, so like we, we kind of said at the start, the, the, first, the first thing that people need to do is they need to read that translated version of the text so they can see that what these words, if they don't, if they don't know what these words mean, just going to get a trustworthy dictionary and have a look at what that words like perpetual or perpetuity means forever and forever lasting and especially with like for instance anybody that says oh yeah did you did you hear they redrafted that like the but the, the most the best one for me that I've, I've had and it's the easiest rebuttal in, in, in on the earth is when people say oh do you know there's only four clauses that's still active and i go great now we're having a conversation because four clauses what are they what are they active from and people kind of look at you with question mark, what do you mean what they're active from well Four clauses are still active. They've got to be active from something. Where is it? Um, maybe the, the original treaty then. Okay, well, let's go back to the original treaty and let's have a look what else is on it. That's when you realise that there's more than four. There's actually 60 or 63. And uh, everything that they're kind of telling you that isn't is actually is in this document. And everything that they've done is actually strictly prohibited. And in words like, oh, so I think it's clause 63. Or my, one of the clauses similar to that is like literally if you try to change this, it's void and forever invalid and it's literally a crime to do that. So when you've got that reiterated in multiple clauses and stuff, you, you, you come up with the picture of this, this, this treaty cannot be changed. It is literally pro, pro, like it, it, we've gone through, so, we've nearly gone through civil wars to, to get this peace treaty. We've gone through so much so what that. happened in like 1215 for it to be so secure up until now like why is it still so secure now so in terms of it being so secure because it let like the, the magna carta like created the foundations that a lot of countries use for their for their for their legal frame framework because of the main principle of, of justice should be in front of your peers it shouldn't be that you shouldn't be at the mercy of a house of cards obviously wow obviously that's not that's not how how we've got things right because we're all we're, we're all living in this system this matrix that is fully enforcing acts and statutes even though it has no authority to do so but and this is what makes it a little bit difficult for people to realize that what we're doing is authentic because we're saying to these we're saying to people how things should be whilst these buildings are still got people going in them they're still staffed the police are still 
wearing their Freemasonry attire and stuff. And, it's and just injustice accepted. is getting served every single day. And people are going to, to prison because of acts and statutes. So they're thinking, they're seeing physical proof that the system's working. So And, they, and then, then they're looking at common law and they're looking at Magna Carta and they're like, yeah, but what's it, what's it done? What's it achieved? And mm. in my opinion, that's the wrong way to look at it because it's the potential that people should be looking at but, rather than the current outcomes. Yeah, people need to see like the the system that we we try to to create, and like, again, I say we try to create. It's still there. Like everything that we've got is still legitimate, and it's still been done. Just because they've typed over it doesn't make what we've got any less anything any less valid than the day that it was created. Like it's still there. But um, we in, ter in in terms of getting people to see that, they just really need to in and over and understand why that treaty was created in the first place. And if you, and if you can do that and you know why it was created, then everything that they do afterwards, the first thing you get that comes in your head is, well, how could they do that if if it, if it says that they weren't allowed to do that? And you you, you then start like self-answering the, the, the questions that unfortunately a fact checker or a Google will just tell you, no, it's, it, 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 is, it is null and void. And if we go back to when it was changed, just the conversation that we had earlier off camera, um, you mentioned that it was changed by King. Oh, King Henry. So and he, King Henry was how old? He was nine years old. So we're, we're trusting King Henry, who's nine years old, to change one of the most influential and important peace treaties that's ever been instated. At, can everyone just cast their mind back to nine years old? It was Skittles, 7 p.m. bedtime, and yeah. literally the tweenies. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and that's where they mess, messed up as well. If, they, if they'd have actually been on the money back then, they would have got King Henry. To, so it wasn't King Henry that annulled it. It was the Pope that annulled it. But if they'd have been a bit more switched on back then, they would have got they would have actually got this nine-year-old to annul it because he would have had more authority than giving... So essentially, the Pope has annulled a document that it literally forbids him from annulling. So... <laughs> It, so that's guys, what's guys, happened guys but why should we care you know most people our age you know smoking weed having sex on tinder you know they think that life's going to be good we can go to festivals now what is it that maybe makes you kind of anxious about are you anxious about the future because you know we, we all have a sense of mission here we've yeah, all guess, been on the streets i guess, I guess that's what the, ang the anxiety and the, and the, and the fear as we've transformed into um mission solution and mission yeah and this is why we've come across these things but Chris, what are you anxious about in the future? Like why, like this, 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 this tyrannical system, this government, it seems to be going down a direction. And obviously we're trying to stop that by empowering everyone and educating everyone. But um, like, yeah, maybe share what you, you feel, could it, we, we, what, what lane they're trying to take us down. I think um, when people like look back at history and they, they look at slavery, etc., and they, they think that um, we've transformed past that part just because we're in a modernized world, um, that's for me that's where people have got it lost and twisted mm, mm. and this type of slavery and agenda now it's so hidden mm. psychological and spiritual and, and slavery yeah. was once once legal you know yeah, there you go do you know what i mean so at this point now it takes a lot of discernment and, and intuitive guidance to really see and feel what's going on and like i said before um people aren't seeing what's going on so they're so far from the solution because they haven't even met the problem yet. They're not recognizing their slavery. Yeah. 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 The problem that a lot of people have is like, if, if somebody takes 80% of your salary, like, do you, do you class that as slavery? Well, we know that hundred percent of somebody's salary, so they're not getting nothing. We know that that's slavery, but if you're taking 80%, which I think on average, every man and woman, if, if you're talking about all the different types of tax and insurance and stuff that they pay, they're given close to 80% of their life. Yeah, because there's no actual they? law to back income tax, is there? No, they're none, they're none. It's all in, I think there was a guy, a famous guy who walked into the Scotland income tax department and he, they, they've got a massive textbook that, well, for tax that's like that big. And he was like, can you find me the, uh, the part that says I have to pay it? And this guy was so confident that he'd be able to find this little section. He's just scrolling through each page after page after page and just unable to find it. And just, yeah, that's the same guy packing. But um, so I'm hearing a lot online about this. Um, is it an invocation? Yeah, yeah. So if we could just spend a little bit of time talking about how the invocation came about. And if you could just also read to us what the actual barons actually sent to the queen and her reply that would be really great for people listening just to add to its validity and if you could also just hone in on what the barons do and how powerful they are and why they would have invoked this and how it came about so we'll, we'll start off back with the, the invocation so clause 61 is the anti-treason and anti-tyranny clause so when the barons who are responsible for 
assessing when t t t treason and tyranny is in the air, they're the ones that have the protocol and the provision in place. If you look and you read the Magna Carta, there is a protocol in place for invocating Clause 61. And the actual process is, or protocol is, when when there's a problem, four of the four of the barons. So there's 25 barons. There's actually more than that, but in this Magna Carta, there's 25 barons. But all that needs to happen is four of them come together, raise an issue to the, to, to to the queen. The queen then has 40 days to respond to that issue and to rectify things. If she doesn't then those four barons can get with everybody else and essentially invocate the anti-treason clause. And that means redress, right? Can you just yeah, so mention re what re redress is? Redress is, well, there's probably a few words that you could use to describe what, what needs to happen afterwards, but we'll use redress. So redress would be, with, with the invocation, our last most recent invocation is 25th of March 2001. So we have now had the opportunity and a clean slate in front of us to all come together to null and void this, this evil, this corporation that has, should never have been in there there in the first place like we've had 20 open years to all get together and say look, yeah did you realize treason has been declared have you gone through the evidence evidence oh actually all of this happened previously as well oh i didn't know that oh yeah they are pretty evil like we've had the opportunity to all come together and agree evil has happened and so to all look at the invocation as our opportunity to change that and it's not like clause 61 really is a set of instructions it is, it is as simple as that the the clause itself is the anti-treason clause but reading it out word for word that is the set of instructions that is essentially telling and instructing and demanding everybody to take an oath when treason has been declared so like imagine a foghorn or a big siren has just blasted out like treason and like you're all everybody in the, everybody in 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 the community knows that treason has been declared so it's almost like taking your anti-treason songbook out looking at clause 61 and reading it as a set of instructions as simple and as in that. 2001 march 23rd this is the last time it happened and this is when um it was invocated by the barons yeah so this so read the whole if we like, again we could go we could go back so much further but if we just keep things in a recent kind of time time scale of things so if we go back to the 70s, that was when in Heath's era, and uh, if anybody's researched Ted Heath or Ed Heath, you'll see that he, he is a disgusting individual that was tied to a lot of paedophilia and a lot of heavy paedophilia at that as well. And just like the papers were, you know, this is the thing, this, is, this is, isn't my opinion, this is the papers, a newspaper and, and all of the media outlets' opinions. And they were using words to describe, to describe him as europhiles and stuff like that because he was trying to take us into Europe, but he was also a paedophile, so it's nice combination of words there so if we go back to Heath's administration and era i'm pretty sure blackmail would have played a part in this but he's then taken us he's he's gone behind to his other mps and stuff and literally said oh yeah i think taking us into europe would be a good idea let's let, let's start getting people to do that and he's told people people from his own like political party have, have questioned him and asked him oh, is that is that not treason we're we allowed to do that and he's gone no 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 it's fine it's fine everything's good everything's by the book you, you know how it is and he's lulled people into taking people into Europe. And, and you would say that going into Europe was a treasonous act, right? Act of, act of treason. That and is why, why would you say that? Because it's taken, we're, only we, like we, we should not be giving away our rights or, or anything to another country. If you, if you do that, you just open a, open a door for all, all kinds of problems. Like if every country should be, unless unless we're going to have one big redress and all work out, like kind of like what they want to do with us now, but the, the nice way, they want to do a great reset with us the evil way. If we actually did that the nice way and had a set of law that's applicable to every kind of, like every, every country with the same song sheet, utter harmony, like that would be nice. But um, what was I talking about before? Article 61's invocation in... Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, from what I've researched, it's the Tony Blair situation and the... the, the so Tony Blair, that was, a treaty, nice. that was a treaty of Nice. That's that's the main that's the main event that triggered the 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 invocation of Clause sixty one. So that was the direct. So when the treaty of Nice started coming around on these barons' desks and they were were being asked to kind of put their name, put their signature on it, that's when they started talking to their advisors. And their advisors would have been like, "Look, if you if you sign that, that's that's treason, and you could you can hang for that if people work it out." And this so this was in the, the papers and everything, wasn't it? Oh yeah, this was fully reported on. Like I said. I've got probably 62 or 63 gigabytes from relation to, to the invocation. <laughs> my, my, my. It's, uh, yeah. They, it's they, they, say 62 gigabytes. Yeah, they, that, that's, that's why they've never come around to my house. They, 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 they know if they do that, they get a guy that's just going to be standing there in court. Like they, they, they'll, they'll do my court session in a bunker underneath 
they, they won't they won't have any open at all they don't want me standing there with those files so after after the treaty of nice got put on the, the desks of the barons and whatnot they then inv- invocated article 61 as the remedy to this treasonous treaty right so could you just speak more about their actual petition and, and like what they actually did to, to remedy the treason so with 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 that and the actual invocation of things we've got we got to imagine like these, these are hereditary peers that have had their roles and responsibilities that, that i don't think they've ever been told to them like the whole aim of the game since treason has really been kicked in was to take away these guys responsibility to take out away our rights and to make because it seem, of their power right because of their power because of our power as well like people yeah. think it's not just like the barons represent us just same as the sovereign represents us that they are they're like they're not they're not higher than us and they never should be higher than us like mm-hmm. they're on the same plateau of law that we are all on for the for the people at home who were just basically that this is all brand new in 2001 it was invocated by the barons committee and they started a petition because of tony blair's um treaty of nice is that right yeah guys so when so when the treaty of nice landed on these guys desks like they did they do things years in advance so the the treaty of nice would have probably started appearing on their desks I think the invocation happened in 2001. The Treaty of Nice probably appeared on their desk, probably 96, 97, 98, time of time, time of time. And when it, these documents started appearing on their, their, their desk, that was when these barons started realizing that they're going to be asked to do something soon and they're going to be asked to put their name on that. And re. I don't... So does the legend, does, does the, the treaty would have no power without the barons signing it, right? Um. Well, t- technically, the way things work is that they, they need. The, the way that they're geared up now is is royal assent. So with the the queen ratifying that and giving the assent to that, that was kind of classed as their illegit illeg- illegitimately legitimate. Okay. But again, like we 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 could have a whole talk show about the coronation oath and how that's been changed over years to instead of it representing an oath to the people, with it being an, an oath to the papacy. Oh, so yeah. that kind of deep rooted treason has been at play for a long time. To- long time. Can I just ask a simple question? Um, queen Elizabeth now does she have any power now? Because I'm hearing a lot about like you know she's she she's been taken away or something like that. In in terms of uh, that, she's never really had any power, and <laughs> that it's the, it's the same it's the same for a lot of a lot of monarchs. Unless, but what I mean is like they've recognised that she's been quite treasonous, you know. And this is within like 2020. Have you guys seen this online? There's a lot saying like in Buckingham Palace, like the royal seals are different and they've changed them and stuff. I don't know if this is just hearsay, but I think, I think a lot of that probably will be. Here, so, okay. Yeah, but... What ha- what happened to this whole situation with the Queen being dethroned after two thousand and one? So the, of Magna Carta. That's, that's, that's that's how it works. So treason treason's been declared. Like there there's no Parliament. There's no go- government. There, there's no nothing. I know, and it's difficult to take that in when, like I said, these court buildings are staffed. People. Wait, there's salaries. no government. There's no Parliament. There's... But we was just outside Parliament on Mon- we Monday the nineteenth of we were there July. With some beautiful buildings and Babylonian architecture, and yeah, they they're all standing, and people were walking in those buildings the same way the police were getting paid, the same way the MPs were. <laughs> The, the whole the wheels kept turning so what are you suggesting here so just a just a quick one we were just speaking about the invocation and the petition that the barons you know c- could we just read that out for the people could we could we hear exactly what the barons said to the queen in black and white this is this is people this this was the declaration of treason from the barons to the queen this is powerful stuff so I'll just play the communication between the Baron and the private secretary of the Office of Sovereign at the time. So this actually, the actual invocation, I think, is probably 30 or 40 pages long. So we won't read all of that, but I'll read this section here so people will get that. So Sir Robin Janvrin, KCVOCB, Principal Private Secretary to Her Majesty the Queen, Buckingham Palace, London, 23rd of March, 2001. Uh, you were kind enough to invite a letter of amplification to accompany our petition to Her Majesty. Thank you. The Treaty of Nice raises issues of major constitutional importance. It directly threatens our rights and freedoms and undermines oaths of loyalty to the crown. Such fundamental matters cannot be considered merely the stuff of day-to-day politics. They, they, yeah. they directly concern the crown, the constitution, and every British subject, including generations yet unborn. We find ourselves living in exceptional times, which call for exceptional measures. Hence our petition to Her Majesty, which exercises rights unused for over 300 years. 
Clause 61 of Magna Carta, which were reinforced by Article 5 of the Bill of Rights, as you know, the wording of Clause 61 says, and laying the transgression before us, petition to have that transgression redressed without delay. And we shall procure nothing from anyone, directly or indirectly, whereby any part of these concessions and liberties might be revoked or diminished. And if any such things have been procured, let it be void and null. So with that bit there, like we were talking about before, Reed, they, they can't change that. They cannot alter that. It is forbidden and prohibited multiple times within the original treaty, and that's what they're just reiterating there. And that's clear, evidential fact from 2001, right? No matter what Google says, no matter what the fact checker website says, these barons are very powerful people, and if they didn't have the power to do this, they wouldn't have been able to do it. And yeah, so following on from that, the Queen had 40 days to reply, right? And she replied on the... 39th. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> she oh, was sat there sweating. Uh, yes. oh, <laughs> sweating those lizard, lizard sweat particles, man. Just pure adrenochrome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll carry on from here. But um, yeah, so we have petitioned Her Majesty to, uh, Majesty to withhold the royal assent from any bill seeking to ratify the Treaty of Nice because there is clear evidence in brackets, which we shall address in a moment, that it is in direct conflict with the Constitution of the United Kingdom. It conflicts with the Magna Carta, with the Declaration of the Bill of Rights, and above all, with Her Majesty's Coronation Oath and the Oath of Office of Her Jesus. Majesty's Ministers. <laughs> Every one of these protections stand to this day, which is why they are now being invoked by our petition. Wow. Ultimately, our supreme protection is Her Majesty's obligations under the Coronation Oath. The Queen has sol solemnly promised to govern the peoples of the United Kingdom according to the statutes in Parliament agreed on and according to their laws and customs. Her Majesty also swore to preserve all rights and privileges as by law do or shall appertain to any of them. From the spiritual point of view, it is unimaginable wow. that Her Majesty would seek, in effect, a divorce from her duty. From a secular point of view, the coronation oath is a signed contract. Recent statements by ministers and by the previous Prime Minister confirm that they would not advise any measure which might tend to breach the coronation oath nor betray Her Majesty's promise to her loyal subjects. Her Majesty accepts the advice of her ministers. Conversely, it is their duty to advise in accordance with the coronation oath. They cannot lawfully advise a breach, nor can they gain or remain in power without swearing allegiance to the Crown. Yet the Treaty of Nice represents precisely such a breach, and it has now been signed by the Foreign Secretary using the Royal Prerogative. Blackstone's com Commentaries, Volume 1, page 239, says the royal pr prerogative. The splendour, rights, and powers of the crown were attached to it for the benefit of the people. That's an important part. They form part of, part of and are, generally speaking, as ancient as a law itself. De, prerog prerog de prerogativa regis is me merely a declaratory of the common law. The duties arising from the relation of sovereign and subject are reciprocal protection that is the security and the governance of his dominions according to law and the duty of the sovereign and allegiance and subjection with reference to the same criterion at the constitutional laws of the country from in return the duty of the governed we have already observed in the law uh, it goes on for another couple of pages but it's all really heavy stuff but i'm just going to get to the response which is the important part yeah so before you do the response just to so who was this who was this that wrote this letter the barons so this was the barons yeah and um and, and where can people research this or what, what where did you get this so this is again when, when so a little bit about myself so i when this started kicking off uh at what well, nearly two years ago now the the, log, the logical part in my brain when this was kicking off was to okay we find an act they're, they're coming at us with these acts and statutes we've got the coronavirus act so therefore we need to find an act to... was any of these um signed off by the queen what, the, what is in the coronavirus act or yeah. Uh, I've, again, she, she probably gave them royal assent gimmickly without authority, but I, to be honest, I don't know. I, I think now that Parliament are sovereign, they don't need the royal assent anymore. So, or they, they don't think that they need the royal assent anymore. So the treason runs even deeper. Yeah, well, like I said, like Parliament are literally out there pretending like the sovereign now when yeah. we're, we're 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 the sovereigns. But just to just to, to show like to, to validate this, you know, because like you said, this is facts. Yeah, you know, don't listen to Google. Where can people find this? Or you, you can find again. Um, just you'd be able to do a freedom of information request if you really wanted to, and you'd be able to get the the exact same petition that was handed to them the same way that okay you can 
the, these lords and barons they don't reply too too much but if you ask them for a copy of the correspondence they give you it so it's, if you do your research it's absolutely undeniable yeah, it's you'll find un this. absolutely this is what I want to clear up. undeniable <laughs>